basically at the moment we have uh, one team under 13 uh, boys and uh, the makeup of the teams we got Vietnamese, um, Chinese, um, various African countries, um, Kenya, Sudanese, Congolese, uh, Ethiopian, a couple of Somalians and um, yeah I think there was uh, one or two in Horn of Africa and recently we got a couple of Burmese boys as well. So yeah, it's quite a, it's quite a mixed bag, and uh, most of them from the local area. Training had been cancelled one night, but a few kids didn't know, and their lift wasn't available. And I was hanging out here with my kid and a few other boys, just kicking the ball. And these, and we we're about to leave, and these two boys had jogged. I don't know how from Sunshine to here, which at least be five k. They jogged all the way. By the time they got here, they were both in bare feet and jogged to get to training. I mean, that's how important it was for them. They will learn uh, teamwork, uh, they will learn, they will learn uh, the value of Australia, they will learn uh, the different uh, cultural backgrounds and uh, they became very good citizens, you know, school-wise and responsibility-wise, they will get that one. And uh, to be uh, like that, they need real motivation, real support. The most rewarding with the club is we're actually able to get kids to participate in playing soccer and, and playing organised sports, which is not a, it is not a, a culture thing for uh, even for Asian or um, for Africans. They don't used to play organised sports. So you get them to play an organised sports and you got them to share the coaches around the clubs. It requires a fair bit of commitment from the kids to come to training, to come to the matches. It's meeting other kids, they're not on their own because I think a lot of these kids could be quite isolated if they haven't got that external environment to come and let off steam. Good mentors, I found the coaches and older players that come and train the kids have been really good mentors something to do and that teamwork and just meeting other kids and being part of something I think it's great for self-esteem. Because transport problem uh, like uh, every Tuesday and Thursday I transport about five boys every Tuesday and Thursday which is its big problem it's not ongoing uh, solution so we have this kind of problem as well. To be honest soccer is very expensive uh, this time. Registration we can say $75. Most of these families they have four or five kids they can't afford it or some kids they have got another activity they have to pay for that it's uh, struggling to get their kids over here but when you see as a talent wise these kids they have really talent uh, they need encouraging. Well, it's, it's a learning experience because, you know, I've, I've been able, to, I've got the resources to be there for my boy, bring him down each week and hang out. And, and then I've sort of met all these kids that don't kind of have that family support uh, through the different circumstances. So it's been a learning thing to, for me to see, oh, why aren't these kids, you know, getting that support and seeing that they need it. I think a lot of the Vietnamese kids at this stage, their families are more settled into Australian culture and more got more resources. So they're, they're often the families are able to be here and bring them down and come to matches and support them. and. Perhaps, I can't say for all, maybe a bit more financially able to support their kids, but not in all cases. Whereas I find a lot of the African boys, their families have got so many other things happening in their lives or sport, organised sport is not seen as important at this stage. So their parents or family members are dealing with other issues. So the boys often rely on other people to bring them down or support them in. Being an Anglo-Aussie growing up with Aussie rules, sort of all the families there, it's part of their lifestyle and it's, but for these new communities that are arriving, it hasn't been part of their lifestyle and the kids are all passionate about their soccer, they've played soccer back home, but there hasn't been organised teams or clubs that they've been involved in, it's just they've come kind of play with their mates. So 
For some of the families, they don't probably see it as a priority that their kids are playing sport and or they just don't have the time or the transport or finances to come and support their kids. First of all is to be a welcoming environment, so it's setting up the club rooms and having community barbecues. Uh, Trung, our manager, he's set up quite a few barbecues, so different parents are meeting each other. And that's working really well because I can see many parents are taking other players under their wings and making sure they've got lifts and everything. Um, transport being an issue, we've managed to be able to hire the community bus through the council and so that's been great because that really unifies the team when we can all travel to a match far away together. I think that's been a really great experience for all the kids and the parents because the parents end up carpooling so they're meeting each other that way. So perhaps we'll have to focus on a few more events come and try days hopefully getting the kids to bring their friends along and often you might find parents aren't coming along but older brothers or sisters will come along and support their their siblings or you know to in these things so I mean it's an ongoing progress program to try and work out how we will get more families involved from these from different backgrounds but hopefully we'll manage it. You got to accept the culture challenge right there's a lot of clashes between um, different cultures and you've got to be able to be a facilitator. You've got to sit down and talk to them and get involved with the families. I mean, I spend a lot of time talking to the parents, different parents when they have problem. Kids, they always, you know, certain things they say and culture clash and so you've got to go and try to smooth them out. And that's, that's, that's the biggest. The second, the second one is, um, uh, the, the funding, all, a lot of the African, especially African uh, kids, they are recently arrival migrants and they are very, they're struggling with life and they are in, you know, like, we, we just have to accommodate them. It's very hard but you try your best we can. First of all, for the coaches to have a bit of understanding where these kids have come from, so things that we think come naturally like parent support, a bit of money and stuff, is to understand, well, some of these communities do operate differently from where they've come from and they're still trying to adjust into the Aussie way of life and so to, yeah a bit of tolerance, um, taking time to communicate to families that what the club is about and why sport can be an important tool in their kids lives. It's not, it's not just about the kids having fun I mean, it is fun, but there's more than that to them. There's more skills. And for their, their kids, they're getting the opportunity to meet other people in the community and be part of something, rather than just hanging out and feeling aimless. Um, is to be able to, to get parent involvement would be great to see more kids getting the opportunity to come in and know they're supported, know they're not ostracised like they feel part of the community, that it's not it's not a club all for one demographic or one community, that, that, that everyone's welcome. So, I mean, it's a club we'd want to see all communities involved, but it's great to be able to say, well, some of these communities need that extra help. So that's supporting the African and Vietnamese communities and making them feel welcome and involved and safe in this environment. Keep on pushing, um, pushing out further into the wider communities. We're trying to attract more players. Uh, I mean, the soccer perception is always ethnic games. I, I don't think that's the way. The way to go is to get more, you know, Australians or, or, or whatever kids in the local area involved in the sport. So. I hope I can achieve that in the future.